What is up everyone? It is once again me, Josh, hello, with another Cyber Dark video. Yeah, um I'm making this one much later than the first one, mainly because, well, we've gotten a lot more CyberDark support. And at the time when we were getting some of the newer stuff, anything af before after Chimera at first, I was just like, hey, it's cool for, you know, like normal summon keel type of, you know, CyberDark. But recently with two of the newer cards, I've been like, all right, I think this is a, one of the other ways we can play the deck now. So now I think there are two ways to play Cyberdark. Um, I'll just recap real quick. Um, this was my very first list. The I don't know why this is like this. Uh, these are supposed to be more copies of Horizon, but I guess I played five copies of Pot of Prosperity. But to go over this, I was like, all right, I need to play Horizon. I need to play Cyber Light Monsters and Cyber Dark Monsters. I play Claw because Claw searches Horizon. Horizon searches the deck. Core grabs Emergency, which grabs Natasha. Natasha summons back Chimera because he has 2100 defense. And the goal was to OTK with the new fusion monster at 10,000 attack. At first, I hated his secondary summoning requirements because he has to tribute a Cyber Dark monster equipped with cyber and dragon well cyber dark fusion mon cyber dark fusion monster so the only way to do that was cyber darkness dragon which takes five cyber dark effect monsters and when he's equipped with um cyber end he comes six thousand attack so you're attributing a six thousand attack not once per turn omni negate for five thousand attack who's just uh, unaffected by card effects, which by the way, uh, Inferno protects them by card effects. Um, I will be refixing this list with some of the new stuff, of course, but I just wanted to talk about some small problems, mainly being his secondary summoning condition and some of the stuff I have to play. Um, I, uh, what, I, there's like one or two people who as well, so like, they didn't like this too much because, you know, you had to play, uh, Core, Natasha, there's a lot of Cyber Dragon cards and people didn't want to do that. But anyway, this is my new list. More of a pure list, um, but I, I've actually really enjoyed it. Don't take the side deck as a side deck. It's These are cards I'm going to talk about, or engines I want to talk about. Um, but we'll start it out with... So before I actually fully start talking about some of these cards, um, just know I will be more talking about some of the newer cards and interactions with the deck, and some choices I have in here versus, like, Horn Edge Keel. Like, I'll briefly go past them, I'll go over, like, claw cannon briefly just because like they're older um if you have any interest in the deck if you're new to cyber dark welcome to cyber dark very fun deck in my opinion um if you know what the tech does well that's what i'm going over briefly but anyway we'll start with cyber dark chimera level four machine i'm not going to go after stats unless it matters but in this case it does not dark machine you can discard a spell slash trap, add power bond from your deck to your hand. Also, you cannot use monsters as fusion material for the rest of the turn, except dragon or machine, which is fine. We only, you know, play dragons and machines, except for, like, a few extra deck cards, which are link monsters. Um, I guess Entis, who's a fusion, but we don't summon her ever. Um, except dragon or machine cyber monsters, once again, is fine. Like, we're only, are literally only fusion monsters you can use to fusion summon our machines and stuff, cybers. And if you fusion summon this turn, you can also use monster in the graveyard by banishing them. Which is, you know, nice, because we can make more copies of this dude. And then, uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send a cyber dark monster from your deck to the graveyard with a different name than the cards in your graveyard. So, why am I playing one of this? Well, this is a more of a control build, which... At first, it was like, but you're not playing many trap cards. I'll, I'll explain that briefly on why. And if anyone's familiar with the Buster Blader engine, then you already know why. But the reason why I'm only playing one Chimera is because he's not the primary playmaker like he was in the OTK build. Which, once again, if you guys are more interested, I will post another video of that. But in this build, you can send him to the graveyard off of Horizon or off Cl uh, Cannon. Or if you play foolish in your build you can send them off of foolish if you want and you send another one and that's the main purpose of him and then if you want to summon him there's claw who can add him back to hand <coughs> sorry about that there's buddy force which can summon him back 
and so there's there's ways to still get him into the hand or field um so yeah that's really about it uh just one copy of Chimera. he's super easy to get to but he isn't as important as he is in other builds uh to edge to horn to keel each have the following effect if this card is normal summon target level three or lower dragon monster in your graveyard and equip it to this monster this monster gains attack equal to the original attack of that monster equipped to it by this effect and then if this card will be destroyed by battle you can send the equipped card you control to the graveyard instead um which is nice because then these guys will trigger their effects which i'll go over briefly when i get to them but what makes them so special then the names you have to play for impact they're also your normal summons um if they equip claw and cannon they become 2400 if they equip the new cyber monster they become 2400 plus a 600 from its effects so 3000 um what else do they do horn does piercing battle damage edge can attack directly for half damage so he'll attack for 1200 if equipped with these guys and you'll do 1500 equipped with this and keel when he destroys a monster by battle hear this out he does a whole 300 that's right folks 300 burn damage what a what a great card am i right but these guys are just normal summons they're beat six that's all um before i talk about this i want to talk about claw and cannon cannon um if both of these guys have three similar effects. If they're sent from the spell shop zone to the graveyard, a discard effect, and when the equipped monster battles. Cannon um, discards himself to add a Cyberdark Machine monster, so any of these guys up here, uh, Horn, Edge, Keel, and Chimera. And then if the equipped monster battles, he sends a monster from your deck to the graveyard. So it can send Chimera, it can send uh, this dude, it can send Claw, it can send these guys, for you can set up a uh, impact. Um, and then if you sent from the spell trap zone to the graveyard, you draw a card. Simple, nice, really good. Uh, Claw, on the other hand, is you can discard him to add a Cyberdark spell trap, which when he first came out was a whole whopping two cards: Cyberdark Impact, your fusion spell, and Cyberdark Inferno, your field spell. But now he has a whopping one two three four five yes a lot more cards to search which is really nice but discard at a cyber dark spell trap if the equipped monster battles you send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard so that you can send like five headed or you can send entis omega um cyber end if you need to get down the graveyard at the time and then if he's sent from the spell traps to the graveyard, you can add a cyberdark monster from your graveyard to your hand. He can add himself, he can add claw, cannon, chimera, uh, the fusion monsters back to your extra deck. Just, you know, standard floating. Now I want to get to this guy real quick. So when he was first announced, I was like, cool. He's a light cyber monster that, you know, lets you play Horizon in a more quote unquote pure cyberdark build. But why would I want to play a pure Cyberdark build at the time when he was first coming when he first came out was announced I mean when I can just you know play the Cyber Dragon engine and do a lot of damage and potentially OTK you well so now that we have more cards that let the you know more pure build play he's now getting attention again to me his name is Attachment Cyber Cyberin Cyberin Huh, funny name, but he's a light cyber monster. So now you don't have to play a cyber dragon engine, but you can if you want, because for instance, core on normal summon searches a cyber spell trap. So you can play a few cyber spell traps that you want to play of your own, or you can play, um, yeah, and, and Natasha still. Natasha still summons back Chimera, but I just don't think it is worth it. But anyway, what else does it do? Besides being, you know, a light for Horizon, so he's a level 3 dragon with 600 attack. And then you can target a dragon or machine cyber monster. Um, you control, equip this card from your hand or field to it. A monster equipped with this gains 600 attack. He lets your cyber dark monsters, your level 4 ones, become 2400 plus 600, so 3000 attack. So you have a blue eye stats monster, just bigger beat sticks. That's it. And then also. He has a floating effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard while well, equipped to a monster, you can target a, one other dragon or machine cyber monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. You can use it once per turn. So, 
when he falls off, he special summons back one of these guys from the graveyard, or he summons back Chimera, or you can summon back Claw and Cannon, which, if you know what Inferno does, you bounce can bounce it back and normal summon another one, so then you can get their discard effects again, which is pretty cool, pretty cool actually. But, yeah, um, I'm really glad this guy's out now, because it lets me play a more pure build. You can still play core and stuff, um, I have a lot of different lists. Um, if there's any you guys want to see, just say so in the comments. Um, next is the Destruction Sword engine. Being 3 Whelp, a uh, normal summon it, add a Destruction Sword card. So, if you know what the engine does, you add Prologue. Um, and then the one Buster Blader for the brick. This guy is just, I'm just playing this one because like, if I do draw it, like, he is one of the better ones. But uh, amazing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and then one of the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. Uh, there's a combo that gets him to Graveyard, which I'll go over as well. But also, he normal summon Cyber Dark, equip this, opponent can't summon from the extract. There's a combo that lets you get in Graveyard and you equip it to the Dra Buster Blader Fusion. And I just, you know, opponent can't summon from the extract. Simple, fun, easy to use. One copy of Cyber Dark Impact. This is your original fusion spell. You make Cyber Dark Dragon by shuffling Horn, Edge, and Keel from your hand, field, or graveyard back into the deck and make Dark Dragon. This is, honestly, Horn, Edge, Keel, and Dark Dragon are kind of underwhelming now, but they're still needed to, you know, make the original three are still the original three. You still have to play them in a more pure build because of your normal summons and the deck revolves around them. And Dark Dragon is still the easiest fusion monster to make for big numbers, but also because it lets you summon the new fusion monster. And yeah, that's about it. Um, one copy because it's searchable by Claw. Three Cybernetic Horizon, and god damn I love this artwork. So, if you don't know what this does, which honestly you should by now, but hey, I understand, you might be new, you might be new. This card is always treated as a Cyberdark card, which means it's searchable by Claw. Hmm, nice. So you can send two dragons and or machine cyber monsters with different attributes to the graveyard, one from your hand and one from your deck. Okay, so you can send Chimera and this dude. Or you can send, you know, one of these guys from your hand, like his like or like or you can send one of these guys from your hand and then this dude. Or this dude and Chimera. Chimera sends another dude. It's almost always gonna be live. You're almost always gonna have access to a cyber monster in your hand, one of these guys. And then what else does it do? You add a add a dragon or machine cyber monster from your deck to your hand. So it searches any of them as well. It can search Chimera if you want Chimera. It can search Claw, Cannon. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to, but you can search this dude. I don't know. So once again, I don't know why. But it searches any... It mainly searches Claw and Cannon. Because Cannon grabs any of these guys. Claw grabs any more of the spell cards. It gets Claw and Cannon in the graveyard already for their equip effects. But it does one more thing. And if you do, send one machine cyber fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. So it sends this guy to the graveyard. So we don't have to use Claw to send it to graveyard if we could just send it to graveyard this way. And you cannot special summon monsters, monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Well, for the turn you activate it, except machine monsters. So if you notice a lot of the dudes in the extra deck that would be made on my turn are machine monsters because like the dragon buster stuff is going to be made on opponent's turn. But El Mirage is the only exception. You're not always going to draw this, or if you just don't want to, you don't. But I also play these guys for that, which I'll go into when I get to them. But Horizon is a consistent search card that searches every card in the deck, pretty much. Like, oh, I need World? Okay, this searches Claw. Claw grabs World. World grabs another one of these dudes. Um, I just want a monster. Search, search, search this. But honestly, you're probably going to go Horizon, add Claw. Claw, add World. World, add Cannon. Cannon, grab one of these guys. Probably what's going to happen realistically. Next, I play three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, you can do extra, but this is better in my opinion. Just add anything. It adds Whelp, it adds Claw, it adds Horizon, it adds World. Um, Overload Fusion, uh, search wall for Inferno. You activate it, you just make Darkness. Banish five Cyber Dark Effect monsters. You don't have to play this, but if Inferno gets popped, it's something to search. Power Bond, you play the one copy because you search it off of the one Chimera, which Chimera is super easy to accessible once again. Um, and it makes your dude double, so you make your Cyber Dark End Dragon 10,000 attack. Next is the 
fun card, and I really wish its artwork would pop up, because I honestly love this card's artwork. This is Cyber Dark World. Remember, guys, this is not a Dark World card, so you cannot search it off of snow. Damn. When this card's activated, you can add a Cyber Dark monster from your deck to your hand with a different name from the cards in your graveyard. Immediately, well, not immediately, so during your main phase, you can immediately after the effect resolves, normal summon one Cyber Dark monster. You can only use the effects of it once per turn. So it's a, it's a search for any of them that's on engrave, which, you know, if these guys are already engrave, kind of annoying. These guys will always be live almost so, because you can also shuffle them back off of impact for fun but you're usually searching these guys to grab these uh to search these guys or you know once again horizon but another thing i love about it, it's not just a search card it's a search card with an additional normal summon effect so you now have two normal summons so you can normal summon whelp and then you can normal summon a cyber dark or a cyber dark or a cyber dark yay but it, it, it lets you get more bodies on board that's it um also it has another thing where if you would equip a monster from your graveyard with a cyber dark monster that actually its effects with normal special summon you equip in the appropriate monster from your opponent's graveyard instead so like if you're against uh rockets you can take their tiny dudes and equip them with this or you can take their bigger dudes if you summon this so it's just it's just cool it's cool that's it um it's, it's not like what makes the card amazing, but it, it, just remember, it is there. Um, it also works well with one of the other newer cards, but it's nice. Next is three copies of Cyberdark Inferno. It is the deck's field spell. Sadly, it does not search, but hey, we already have three search, three, six search cards. Well, two search cards, but you play three of each. But what, anyway, what does Inferno do? So Cyberdark effect monsters you control are equipped with an equip card, Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Also, your opponent cannot target with the card effects. So your 2400 or 3000 or 6000 attack monsters are unaffected and cannot be targeted by opponent's card effects. It makes them big and it makes them harder to deal with. What else does it do? You can target a cyber dark monster you control. Return to the hand and immediately after effect resolves, normal summon another cyber dark monster. Back then, the main thing you do is like, oh, I have a cyber dark on board now that doesn't have an equip. Bounce it, normal summon it, equip claw and cannon. But now you can go like normal summon chimera, discard, add power bond, bounce it back to hand, normal summon one of these, and equip something else. Um or you can buddy force out these guys as well. It just more consistency stuff. Well not really consistency, but it, it lets lets pressure continue going and makes them once again unaffected. Also if destroy, you can add a card that says fusion in its name, or poly. So you can add overload fusion. Um, next is 3 Imperm, it's just a generic card, if you don't want to play this, you don't have to play this, same with Overload Fusion, so you just want to make this 41, you just cut these four, but I, I just like having the one generic card, in my opinion. Next is Prologue and Destruction Sword Memories. So, Prologue, you send a Destruction Sword card and one Buster Blader monster from your deck to your graveyard, except itself, and spell summon Buster Dragon from your extra deck, but it's thrown during the end phase of the next turn. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Destructive sword cards you control cannot be stored with battle card effects. You can activate it once per turn. So you use this. You send Destruction Sword Memories to the graveyard and Buster Blader and make Synchro. What does this do in the graveyard? So that is on a field effect. Discard a Destruction Sword card and special summon Buster Blader from your deck. Doesn't matter. What does this do then in the graveyard? You can banish this card from your graveyard. Fusion summon one Buster Blader, the dragon destroying swordsman from your extra deck by banishing materials listed on it in your graveyard. Wow, all right. So, combo, combo, great combo. Normal summon Whelp, add Prologue. Turn Whelp into El Mirage, set Prologue. On opponent's turn, you activate Prologue, send Buster Blader and Destruction Sword Memories to the graveyard. You then also chain, banish, I'm pretty sure that's cost. Um, yeah, that's cost. So then you banish this and Whelp, because you know you linked off with it, to meet the requirements. Oh, and Buster Blader to meet the requirements because he takes a Buster Blader and a Dragon Monster, which you just used to make this dude. At the end of it, you'll have Buster Dragon and Buster Blader, and I'll explain them a bit when I get to them. But that's the combo. Um, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. It makes everything 
really fun. And then on your turn, you'll banish this from your graveyard to make it so he doesn't blow himself up. Because, you know, Perlock destroys him, but like you can protect him. Which is cool. Um, next, I want to talk about Evasion first, because this is the very first card that when I looked at, I was like, wow, I can really start playing like a more pure Cyberdark deck and actually have fun with it. And this card actually is what made me change how I feel about the secondary summoning requirements for Cyberdark and Dragon. Well, these guys get annoying to say after a while. So once per turn, you activate one of these effects. Target a Cyberdark effect monster you control and equip one Dragon or Machine monster from either graveyard to it as an equip spell. And, and it gives it a thousand attack. So it just adds some damage, which makes your dudes a bit bigger. If you really want to, um, like normal summon, equip cannon, and then use this, equip this dude, and then he becomes uh, 30, 34 plus 600, so 4,000 attack. So you can be like, aha, look at my 4,000 attack level 4 monster. <laughs> That's fun. You can make your dudes bigger. But one of the main reasons why I like it is because now you can go Cyber Dark Dragon, uh, equip anything, doesn't really matter. And then you equip Cyber, use this, equip Cyber End to him. And now you can tribute um, Cyber Dark Dragon, equip with Cyber End Dragon to make this dude. That's fun. What's, what else does it do? Send one equip card you control to... One, sorry about that. Send one equip card you control equipped to a machine monster to the graveyard. Destroy one card your opponent controls. So it sends Claw, um, Cannon... Attachment to destroy a card. Attachment will float into one of these dudes, or one of these dudes. So any of these dudes, which then you can bounce with Inferno and normal summoning again to get their effects, or you can bounce Claw Cannon and normal summon one of these guys from your hand if you have them in hand, for you have these guys for the discard effects. You can bounce, you can use attachment to bring back Chimera, use Chimera's effect to search Power Bond, bounce them back to hand, normal summon one of these dudes. Or you can use Invasion to send Claw to the graveyard. Claw will add back a Cyberdark monster. So Chimera, Claw, or Cannon, or one of the fusions if they went to the graveyard in some other way you didn't want there. Or you can send Cannon and draw a card. So that's why I'm liking Invasion. It makes how I feel about the new fusion a little bit better and not as salty about the secondary summer requirements, but also it's an interruption. I'm playing two copies of it because, well, you can use both effects on the same turn, but it's one per copy. So, like, uh, if I have both copies up on the field, I can uh, equip stuff and um, send stuff to get a pop. That's why I'm playing two copies. Next is Super Team Buddy Force Unite. This was a card I really started messing with Cyberx in on Duel Links, but I actually kind of like it in the deck in general. So if you don't know what this does, you can target a face-up monster in the field, special summon one monster from your hand or graveyard with the same original type as that monster, but with a different original name. If this card in the owner's spell trap zone is destroyed by opponent's card effect, you can set a super team buddy force unite directly from your deck to your spell trap zone. So what does this do? It's just it's more ways to get these guys on board. Like uh, end phase of opponent's turn, you buddy force unite when these guys bring back whelp if you want to, or this dude because they're a tuner monster, and you could play more synchro monsters, like you could play like high speed right Chambara or um, Denlong please Konami, give me back my Denlong or you can just bring back these guys, normal summon with Inferno um, Desperado if you play that in the build, I'll go over one later I just, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. If your opponent pops it, you get another one on your turn. So it's just more bodies. That's it. It's, it's what I like doing. Um, anyway, we'll go on with the extra deck. Two copies of Cyberdark and Dragon. Uh, the reason why I'm playing two copies is because one, first copy, I make Cyberdark Dragon because he's easy. Throw these guys in graveyard, activate impact, shuffle them in the deck, make this dude, and equip a machine or anything. Use Invasion, equip uh, Cyber End to him, tribute Cyber Dark with End on him, make the first copy. But oh, what's this? I now have Cyber Dark End, I mean Cyber End and Cyber Dark in the graveyard. Normal summon, effect, search Power Bond, Power Bond, banish them both in the graveyard because they're both there easily, make the second one at 10,000 attack points. Wow. And then, you know, you punch really hard. 
then you can like inferno back this back to hand and normal summon one of these dudes um one copy of five-headed dragon you don't have to play this this can once again be like anything but you send it to grave out of a claw you make your darkness um 6, attack i mean 7,000 attack or you make this dude 6,000 attack that's about it you just make your dudes big one copy of cyber and dragon you send it off of your horizon and then you just make these guys with it cyber darkness dragon you'll hardly ever make him but if you do you should literally win because he, t he so hard to make it takes five cyber dark effect monsters must first be fusion summoned and this card is special summon you can equip one dragon or machine monster from your graveyard to this card gains attack equal to the original attack of that monster so it becomes you know if you equip five headed you become seven thousand if you equip this dude becomes six thousand the reason why you play them is because when your opponent activates a card or effect quick effect send one equip card you control to the graveyard negate the activation do destroy it not once per turn not once per turn negate and destroy anything sadly you'll rarely make him but hey he's there um, i'll talk about these guys when together next we have just cyber dark dragon must be fusion summon if you special summon target dragon in your graveyard equip it and he gains attack you to original attack he gains 100 attack for each monster in the graveyard he's a beat stick you equip five headed if you want you punch him really hard congratulations that's the card but the main reason to play him is because you know he's easy to make because of impact you can equip this to it he's the main requirement for this dude that's about it big beat stick very fun card uh, two copies of Entis, you send it off a claw, uh, pops a card and puts on the grave, everyone knows what this does. Um, talk about my synchros real quick. One copy of Omega, you can you can make it, it's very rare, but you can because of this dude, and this dude being tuners, like these guys. Uh, you know, it, it, can, it can happen, it's not likely. One, two, three, four, five, six, alright, he's an eight, I'm not retarded. I was like, maybe you can singer this dude. No, you can't. But the main purpose is if he's in the graveyard, you target a card in the graveyard, you put him in the extra deck, and you put the card back in the deck. Or extra deck. Uh, you see, you can recycle Entuses. You can recycle Entuses. Or these guys. Yeah, you can put Invasion back. Yo, yeah, you can put Invasion back. <laughs> you put Invasion back, search off Claw. But like the thing is, like you just you put cards back. That's the main purpose of it. Um, now I'm going to talk about these two and tangent if you don't know what these do uh we'll start with buster dragon as he's the, the kind of like the quote-unquote core part like the fusion doesn't make sense unless you know what he does so all monsters your opponent controls become dragon once per turn if you do not control buster blader you can target a buster blade in graveyard special summon it doesn't matter once per turn during your opponent's turn quick effect target a buster blader monster control equip a destruction swordman monster from your graveyard that will pump up a bit is the uh the target a buster blader and equip with a destruction sword that comes up sometimes with one of the combos but the main purpose of this card is all monsters your opponent controls become dragons but josh why does that matter well it simply matters because of this dude must be fusion summon cannot attack directly gains a thousand attack and defense for each dragon monster your opponent controls or is in their graveyards so becomes big turns all dragon monster opponent controls defense position also dragon monsters in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effects and if you talk to the monster, you're just piercing. So, you make uh, Buster Dragon. You make this dude. Oh, this guy makes everything dragons. You probably can activate dragon monster effects. Wow, how convenient. And he becomes even bigger if you play uh, this, which makes it, you can make everything dragon. So, you can hit him really hard. Very fun. Um, this is how I want to play the deck because I don't want to play a lot of trap cards. Um, and then I'll explain the combo in a bit. Next are just Link Monsters. One copy of El Mirage because you link off El Welp, but if you want to activate Horizon the same turn, that's why I'm playing these other three links. So as you know, Horizon locks you into Machine Monsters for like the entire turn. Sadly, it doesn't say for rest turn, it's the entire turn. So what you can do is you can go Normal Summon Welp, Welp add Prologue. You can go World, add, um, which by the way, remember, you're playing three World, three Horizon, uh, three claw, so that's nine copies of world plus Prada Prosperity who can get to them. You can go world out of Cyberdark, summon the Cyberdark, uh, because world gives you additional normal summon, and you make Crystron Halky Fibrax because this is a tuner monster. And when you do, oh yeah, he's a machine too. So then you can go Halk, summon Destruction Sword Buster, and then you make either Cleaver Genius or Gaia Saber if you want more damage. And then now, 
Well, you can't make this dude, so you make Gaia Saber with this dude. And now he's bigger. But, or you can just, um, you make this with two Cyber Darks. But yeah, you make, you should use Hulk and uh, Destruction Sword to make Gaia. And you have a 2600 monster on board. But now you have Whelp in the graveyard for uh, Prologue and Destruction Sword memories. And then this guy's in graveyard now too. Which means you can go, um, uh, Buster Dragon, target the fusion monster, equip this, and not only can your opponent not, you know, use monster effects, because, you know, everything's a dragon, but they also can't summon from the extra deck. So, just, it's more of, are you, kind of a win more, but it's there. And then since he's also now in rotation, you, um, anytime you normal summon one of these, you can equip this, and it becomes a mini floodgate your opponent has to deal with first. Next, lastly, are just a few cards I want to talk about. First, I'm going to talk about um, the Duel Links cards. Here, I'm just going to organize this real quick. Um, put these two together. All right. So these are just what the ones I want to talk about. It's going to be because because of Duel Links, I I play these a lot. It's going to be uh, Fortress who discards a level 8 machine to summon himself up to 8. So you can discard, you know, 4-4, four, four, summon it. But the main reason is you can discard uh, Desperado Barrel Dragon, summon him, and he's destroyed by battle, he pops a card. Or if he's targeted by opponent's monster effect, you discard a card from the hand. And then when Desperado is sent to the graveyard, you add a card that has a coin toss effect, so you add this. But, once again, that's dueling stuff. There's prob I can actually probably think of a decent Meccano build because of, you know, deployment, and this, level 10 dude. You know, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff. Um, but if, So if you want to see that, actually do let me know. I would love I love Cyberdarks, and I'd love to make more Cyberdark decks. But the main thing is, if a face-up is Desperado. If a face-up Dark Machine Monster controls destroyed by battle card effect, special this card from your hand. Once per turn during the battle phase, you can toss a coin three times. Destroy face-up monsters in the field up to the number of heads. If there's also three heads, you draw a card. That'll rarely happen, but you maybe do one or two. And this card attack direct can't attack that turn. And this card sent to the graveyard at a level seven or lower monster that has a coin toss effect. All right, what are you what are you adding? You're adding this Arcana Force. You'll never summon it. You just use it for its hand effect. During damage calc, if either player um, battle uh, during either player's turn, you can discard this card. You take no battle damage from that battle. So you, another way you can get this in graveyard is uh, like opponent attacks monster equipped cannon, use cannon, send Desperado, add this, and you, take, you can discard this whenever you don't want to take damage, but then you can also go uh, Buddy Force Unite, bring back Desperado, and Desperado can pop cards during their battle phase. And then if you still have that Cyber Dark um, protected, you know, because you would have, you know, been destroyed by battle, you would have drawn a card, you can then go Inferno, bounce it back, normal summon, and re-equip. It's fun. I don't think it's super good in the TCG, but it's fun. I like the idea of, of him still, and he's just an option I wanted to put out there. Next is the Dogmatica engine. You know what it is. You go into Dear Servant, send Ash, add this girl, summon this girl, add Punishment, and Phase, add this. What's the purpose of this? You get a negate and a uh, one to two pops, because you can send Cyberen that way if you wanted to. Or you can send a five-headed dragon if you wanted to, but you would send Entis. She, this would pop, and then Entis can pop a back row. You can summon this for a negate, and some bodies on board. It, it was what I want to try first, but the fact that you're locked out of the extra for so long is why I didn't want to play this. I mean, you can play it if you want. It's definitely an option. You just want to play the Destruction Sword Engine. You'd place these with the Ash and any of the other ones you want to. Any other extra card, you can cut out five-headed if you wanted to. Um, put those in there. Uh, you probably wouldn't play Buddy Force in that case. And you would cut Overload Fusion. And you would probably cut that, maybe. But that's the Dogmatic Engine. What's next? Um, talk about these ones first. So, Barbarian Shark, you can send Claw. Well, not send Claw. Claw's effect sends a card from your extra deck. You send this. This stacks a rank up magic. So, you stack this. You draw this. You activate it. You play any 107 or C107, and then rank it up into C107, so you make this. And once per turn, you attach one of these material from this card until you end of the turn. You get the effects of all face-up cards on the field, currently. And also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. So he's a massive negate on the field, and then he's 4500. It was better back in then, in my opinion, when the game was just a little bit slower. Also, you can make 
cyber on cyber then you could put dark matter on top of him who would send claw cannon and this dude or if you wanted to play a blue eyes build it would send the stones and there's a lot of cool things you can do with dark matter um because like arc brave goliath uh, but yeah, there, there's that. Um, Pot of Extravagance, your extra deck would be different. You want to play the Buster Dragon, Buster Engine. Um, and you can just make this more prevalent to what you need to do. More of these guys, more of these guys. Uh, maybe more of this. Just You would just play only the important cards, but you get a random draw. I like being able to search out when I need more. Because like, Horizon, Whelp, uh, Cannon Claw, Buddy Forts. Um, Summon Limit. Uh, you can play this in more, like, if you want to play super trap heavy and just want to go, like, normal summon cyber, equip something, set a bunch of back rows, you, this is one of the better traps than that. I don't like it because I'm summoning too much. Goes a match. Um, I actually would side deck this in general because, you know, dark. Oh, shit, he's a light. But, like, I would side out probably that stuff, like, the buster stuff, because, like, going second, I would do, like, goes and strikes, and then just break boards, and I'd just sit on a bunch of dark monsters because everything in the extra deck besides... Uh, like, Cyber Ren, you'll never make, and then this dude who's a light, but outside him out, Omega, you'll hardly ever make, and he's a light, you won't make the Link monsters then. But you just set a bunch of Dark Dudes and punch them. Um, next are two more cards. I'll talk about this one first, because this one's better. Uh, once per turn, declare a mission monster type. All monsters in the graveyards become that type this turn. Um, that's actually kind of what I would, I wouldn't mind side decking in general. Uh, but only in formats where decks more like Orcas are better because it messes up Orcas because they're locked into machines that turn. So like you make um, anything else like dragons because then you can still equip stuff with uh, invasion. But it also messes them up because now they can't use symbol skeletons or yeah symbol skeletons because one of one summons from banish. So they can't use skeletons back a Galatea or a Dengirsu. So that's a one less summon they have. Um, but like also against zombies they can't Mizuki. Um. That's cool. But also the other main reason is because then you can activate this. Normal summon, well not normal summon, uh, make Cyber Dark Dragon and equip Cyber End Dragon that way. But the reason why I'm not main decking it is because Invasion is searchable and equips Cyber End Dragon already to Cyber Dark Dragon. And that's my main problem. Is it, It's a cool idea, but I don't want to play any of those just like big beat stick ones. Like you can play uh, Wise Soul on the deck. Um, this dude. And then, uh, when a face up monster controls, draw by card effects sent to the graveyard. You can spell summon him, you spell negation, but also he's the biggest level 1 to 3 monster, so you can make your monster gain 2500 attack if you wanted to, but I just don't think that's worth it as much. So, it, I see it more as a side deck card than a main deck card. Next is my least favorite of any of the new cards. So, I know for a fact in the anime, this is only in there. Because, well, anime stuff. Roid user used this. What does this do? You discard this card, then activate one of these effects. Add a non-win roid monster from your deck to your hand. We aren't playing any roids. Um, I don't think any of the roids are good in Cyberdarks. Sure, this is cool for any vehicle roid players out there. Like, the whole three of you. Maybe even two of you. But it doesn't matter to this deck. Unless we get, like, a really broken Roy that works along with him. So what else do you do? This turn, the activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a monster is fusion summoned this way. You go, you use this effect, you discard, hopefully a Chimera, or this dude, because he gets him in the graveyard, and Chimera send another dude, just to do, guess what? What Meltdown already does. It's a neg 2 for what Meltdown does when you can just activate Meltdown and go plus 2 with the Makaba. And you can do this because you go actual normal summon for Alistair, make uh, Alamirage into Seekir Garna into Makaba. And then you use world's additional normal summon for a cyber dark monster. And the, your only problem is you can't activate horizon that turn. But you go plus two off of a meltdown versus a neg two off of a freaking roid card. 
just wow that's that's bad that's that's really bad i'd rather i'd rather play meltdown even then it's just like even if you don't want to play invocation macabre like you just go meltdown add a single copy of alistair and you make your fusion monsters gain a thousand more attack i'd rather do that than go neg two off of a roid all right what else does this roid do it's one more effect if this card's in your graveyard you can make this card in the graveyard become a dragon onto the unphase so you can send him off of cannon to make a 2900 attack monster type of thing but here's a secret uh, you don't even need to do that you can just do you know oh wait no he's got a machine damn all right but you just you know he's a sun blue eyes And spoiler alert, Blue Eyes is 3,000 attack. 100 bigger than this dude. But Blue Eyes is a brick. But Blue Eyes is a brick. This guy negs two to get himself in the graveyard for something that Meltdown does for free. For something that Meltdown could do on a plus one. Don't play the Roid. It's, unless we get a really broken Roid that this can search. There, you're going leg two for meltdown's effect. But hey, whatever. Anyways, with that, that is another discussion video down. Um, I personally love the stack like a lot, and I can talk about different variants of the stack nonstop all the time. And if there's any specific version of the deck you want to see. Like, if you want to see an update on the OTK version or a Machina version, which I actually might do, um, just let me know in the comment section. I'm sorry this was so long. There was just a whole lot to talk about. But I promise in the next one, when it's just a specific deck, it won't take as long. Anyway, if you stuck around this long, let me know what you think in the comments. And goodbye.